God once again to be in this platform that God has given us to uh, hear the word of the Lord, to get to encourage each other. I'm so delighted and I want to welcome you, all of you, into this service that God has granted us and that uh, you may be with us from the beginning all the way to the, to the end and I pray that God will strengthen you, will encourage you through what we are going to share. But let us open with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads and let us call on the heaven. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I would like to thank you. I would like to bless your wonderful name, O oh good Lord, for Father, indeed, you are our God. You said, Jehovah, you will never forsake us, you will never leave us alone. But every step of the way, you said you'll be with us, Jehovah, through your word, O oh God Almighty. For that is what Jehovah Master, that brings us closer to, to thee and draw us further to thee, O God Almighty. And even, Father, help us to understand you and to understand your will. Father God, I pray even this service, committing it into thine hands, O Jehovah, Master. Attach my viewers, O God Almighty. Bless them, Jehovah, through the words that you have put in my heart and in my mouth, O God Almighty. As Jesus said, the words that I speak, Jehovah God, they are both spirit and they are also life, O God Almighty. Let this word dispense life, Jehovah, to my hearers, O God Almighty. I thank you. And I bless your holy name, in Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen, and amen, and amen. Welcome, welcome once again to this service, and so grateful and so thankful to the Lord that God has granted us the opportunity. Uh, we'll never get tired, we'll never uh, familiarize with the things of God, with the church, but every opportunity that God has given us, reminded about the early church, uh, the Bible says they continued daily in the book of uh, uh, Acts, the second chapter, it, is, it was a daily occurrence. It was not something they were doing for one day in a week, or they were doing it maybe over the weekend only, but this, the Bible says, it was a daily thing. And we pray that God will help us. It doesn't matter how many times we have a service in a week, but you will have people that are hungry, and they are thirsty for the truth. And the Bible says in the book of Acts, the Second chapter and verse number 46, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple. And uh, so this is what we are talking about, the saints of God. It was not a one-day thing. It was not a one-off thing. But it is something that they did daily, day by day. They did it uh, without getting tired, without familiarizing with the things of God, without uh, even taking the men of God for granted. But they looked forward. Uh, for every service, every day. They never even went there uh, on the Sabbath as the Bible had required, but they went daily. Again, in the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, and verse number 41, uh, the scripture says, and, and, they departed, and they departed from the presence of, counsel, of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer a shame for his name. These were the disciples after they had been uh, Arrested and even uh, beaten and even put to shame, 
Uh, but they continued, uh, even after they left there, they le left there rejoicing. Uh, verse number 42, the Bible says, and daily, that is the word, daily. This is, we may be in our time, we are doing it uh, four services a week, uh, but, 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 but for them it was a daily thing. And they never familiarized uh, with God, they never familiarized with the word of God, they never familiarized. Uh, were the preachers, but they looked forward. They were looking forward for every opportunity uh, that God will give them to hear the word of God. And the Bible says, and daily in the temple and in every house, not only in the church house, uh, but also in their houses, they would visit each other. And that we see the beginning of cell group meetings where we have um, uh, church services held in the houses of the saints. Uh, when the saints of God will come together, uh, to break bread and the scripture says and daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach uh, Jesus Christ they never stopped uh, they never ceased every day whenever an opportunity was there and that is why I'm leading here to show you the importance uh, of uh, the word of God we don't get weary uh, we don't uh, familiarize we don't say we have heard this word one time too many we consistently follow the Lord. We consistently uh, follow the Lord, as the scriptures say in the book of uh, uh, Revelation, the 14th chapter. It says, and these are they who followed the lamp with us, however he went in the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter, and verse number 4. These are they which were not defiled with the women, for they were virgins. These are they which follow the lamp with us, however he goeth. These are individuals as long as there's a church service whether it was in the morning whether it was in the evening whether it was in the church house in the temple or it was in the social media uh, like we are having right now online services whether it was in the cell group meetings uh, these saints of God they followed him and that is what we need uh, that is what we need to develop as God's people uh, that we don't get to familiarize or get weary uh, that we say we have listened to this word uh, for many years. Today we can miss. Today I can uh, miss the service, the online service. Uh, because again, I know Friday it will be there, or Sunday it will be there, or Wednesday it will be there, or Sunday morning, or Sunday evening. But this is a child of God who faithfully has followed the lamp, has followed Jesus Christ all the days of their life. And these are they for they. These are they which follow the lamp with whosoever he goeth. And there is a reward. Uh, there is a word lie there when a child of God follows Jesus Christ faithfully and follow the truth faithfully. There is a word. It is not in vain. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. And, and uh, we are seeing a first of scripture like here in the book of Matthew, the 19th chapter. Peter also having followed Jesus Christ faithfully wherever he went and even having forsaken his uh, fishing business. Uh, he also got concerned and he said, verse number 27, of the book of Matthew, the 19th chapter. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. Like you hear a child of God saying, I left that deal that I was almost going through. I left that commitment. I left my office. I left my shop when almost uh, uh, customers were coming in and they were going to give me good business. But I left that and he said, and followed thee. And I'm saying we should not be people that are following the lamp when it is convenient. When it is, uh, we go to church and uh, we switch on on the online services when it's favorable and when it's convenient. But it is, uh, we forsake. Sometimes we'll be called to forsake uh, many things and follow the lamp. And he said, what shall we have thereof? Uh, they, 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 this was a concern and it is, it is a, a genuine concern for every child of God. You don't just follow the church. You don't just follow Jesus Christ brightly. Uh, you must be confirmed. There must be a confirmation. Uh, there must be an assurance that you are not doing it in vain. And Peter felt like he needed to have that assurance. Uh, he needed, he has followed Jesus Christ like many of us. And uh, he felt, what is there for me? And Jesus, verse number 28. And Jesus said unto them, he, he is, this is the guarantee. He is saying, Verily I say unto thee, that, we, that, that ye which have followed me, uh, because the, the qualification is consistent of uh, following the lump, following the truth. And Jesus said that you 
that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. Now he is saying there is something we are waiting for. Uh, there is something we are waiting for, me and you. Uh, there is something that we are waiting for, and that is what it is our guarantee. When we follow the lamp, when we follow the truth, then we hold on the word of God. It is not a one-day thing. It is not a one-year thing. It is something that we do all the days of our life. Until we breathe our last, last breath, until maybe we have this time of regeneration happen, in, even some of us, maybe we are, not, we are still alive. And Jesus is saying in the regeneration. Now, this regeneration, uh, brethren, it is not the regeneration of the soul. Uh, this is not the regeneration of the soul that Jesus is defiling to, but this is the, the regeneration of the creation. This is the, the, again, Genesis, to take this world again to what it was before the fall of man. Uh, so when we are in the church and in the faith, there is something we are looking forward for. Uh, there is something we are, we are anticipating, and that is the regeneration, the again Genesis. When we are going to have the new earth, Revelation, the 20, uh, first chapter and first number five, uh, the Bible is saying, and he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. That is the regeneration. That is the again Genesis, the when creation, the whole creation, the animal kingdom, uh, the human family, the vegetation, everything will be taken back to the Genesis, the before the fall of man. And this is Jesus, this is God who is saying, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Light for this. These words are true and faithful. In other words, we are looking for the regeneration. So when Jesus is saying uh, in the regeneration, it is not the regeneration of the soul. Though the soul has to be regenerated, has to be renewed. By the renewing of your mind, uh, the Romans, the, uh, the 12th chapter, and verse number 2, uh, the Bible is saying that is now different from the other, uh, what we are talking about, regeneration. This is the regeneration of the mind and the soul. And be not conformed to this world, but, but be ye transformed by the renewing, that is the regeneration of the soul, that fallen uh, soul, that sinful soul. That soul that cannot seek after God has also to be regenerated. But Jesus is not referring to that in the book of Matthew. He is saying there is something we are looking for, and that is the again Genesis. When everything was good, when there was no sin, when there was no death, when there was no pain, when there was no sorrow, when there, the devil was not there. That is what Jesus is calling the regeneration. Even Peter talked about it in the book of Second Peter, the third chapter, and verse number 13. Uh, the Bible is talking about it. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, according to the promise of God, uh, there is something that we are looking for. The reason why uh, we are coming to church, the reason why even as a preacher man, I keep on preaching the word of God is to prepare saints of God and to build confidence in them that there is something we are looking for. Uh, there is something we are anticipating. There is something that has been promised to the human family, and that is the regeneration of all things. That is the, again, Genesis. Praise the name of the Lord. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new, for new. That is, it has to be renewed. It has to be renewed like the soul and the mind is going to be renewed and is being renewed by the word of God. And then we are going to have a regeneration of all things. The heavens, looking for new heavens and a new earth. Praise the name of the Lord. We are in dwelleth righteousness wherein dwelleth righteousness in that new heaven and in that new earth there is not going to be no evil there's going to be only righteousness wherein dwelleth righteousness and that is what Jesus came to inaugurate and he said follow me because there is something that has been promised and that's something that has been promised it is the regeneration they are again Genesis uh, the new heaven and the new earth where dwelleth righteousness so when we follow you that have followed me in the regeneration in the again genesis praise the name of the lord uh, so back to the book of matthew the 19th chapter he's saying he's saying and uh, verse number 28 and jesus said unto them verily i say unto you that you which have followed me and that is what i was talking about in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit 
in the throne of his glory. Now, in the regeneration, in the again Genesis, it is when Jesus will be back on his throne, where he'll be equal with the Father, where he'll have that, 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 that glory that he had with the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what he is talking about. There again, I would like to submit to you, saints of God, that even today, like we are preaching right now, Jesus is not seated on his throne. Jesus is not seated on the throne. When he ascended up on high, he never sat on the throne. And, 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 and uh, uh, I may uh, want to explain that a little further, uh, that Jesus is not seated on the throne when he'll be sitting on the throne is during the regeneration. When there, there is going to be the again Genesis, again Genesis, the new heavens and the new earth. And lie now, we are not having the new heaven, neither are we having the new earth, neither are we having righteousness dwelling on the face of the earth. Uh, there is still sin on the face of the earth. There is still pain and death and sorrow on the face of the earth. So there is no righteousness lie now. That is what the church is now trying to let le store, to restitute, uh, to give it back through the church, through the preaching. But now Jesus, when he came on the face of the earth and he did his duty and his work, he ascended. Uh, the book of Psalms 100 and, uh, and the 10th chapter and verse number one, we see David through a prophetic hard eye, uh, through a prophetic inspiration of the almighty. He, he, he prophesied about the coming of Jesus Christ and the ascension of Jesus Christ back to heaven. And the Bible is saying, David is, this is David who was speaking. The Lord said unto my Lord. Now there are two Lords like there. One is a capital letter, lettered name, word like there. And the other one is small lettered. The, the capital lettered Lord is Jehovah. It means Jehovah, God Almighty, Yahweh. And the second Lord is Jesus Christ. So we see God addressing Jesus Christ. He says, sit thou at my right hand. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus, when he ascended up on high, after the ascension, after he came on the face of the earth and shed his own blood and died on the cross, uh, he, 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 and he ascended up, up on high, he never, ever went to sit on his seat of glory. He went to sit on the right hand of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So the, the Lord said unto my Lord, and Jesus was, uh, because there was that belief, there was that belief among the Jews, that when David died, he went to heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. And they thought this, and they believed this first scripture was referring to David. That when David died, he went and sat on the right hand of God. No, this was not referring to David. He was, he, it was referring to Jesus Christ. And Jesus, knowing there was a problem like that, when he was on the face of the earth, he talked about it. In the book of Matthew, the 22nd chapter and verse number 42. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm, I'm saying the importance of following. There is a time that we are looking for, a time of regeneration. Praise the name of, of the Lord. Verse number 41. Uh, while, while, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, because there was that belief that the first of Scripture in the book of Psalms was referring to David, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, He is the son of David. He said, It is true. He is the son of David in the flesh. But he said unto them, how then does David in spirit? Because Jesus was the son of God in the spirit. But in the flesh, he was the son of David. So Jesus is saying, then, then he said unto them, how then does David in spirit call him, call him Lord? I told you in Matthew our other Psalms, the 110th chapter is saying there are two lords right there. The one is Jehovah and the other one is Jesus Christ. So David is referring to Jesus Christ as my Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So he said now unto them, verse number 44, the Lord said unto my Lord. So God said unto the Lord of David and the Lord of David is Jesus Christ. 
He said, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So that is the question. So Jesus is saying, there have been that belief that this was referring to David. That when David died, he went to heaven and sat on the right hand of God. So the question, Jesus, verse number 45. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? So there is that argument. And I'm showing you when Jesus ascended, he never went to occupy his seat or his throne of glory. He sat, he went and sat at the right hand of God. David, even Peter said about David in second, in, in Acts the second chapter and first number 34. Acts the second chapter. Uh, let me finish on that. For David is not ascended because there was still that theory. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord, uh, the Lord said unto my Lord, the same thing that Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now Peter is repeating it because there was that theory. And Peter wanted to let people know that this first of scripture in the book of Psalms was not referring to David, but it was referring to Jesus Christ that after the ascension, after he came on the face of the earth, he went back to his father. He never occupied the same seat that he had. No, that seat, he relinquished it to come and save men, to come and be a redeemer from being equal with God and sharing the same glory with God. He relinquished that so that he can save you and he can save me. He surrendered that. He gave up that so that he can come and be a redeemer of men, die on the cross because of our sins. But when he did that, he died on the cross. His death and the shedding of blood was a means of our remission, of the remission of our sins. But remember, the business was not finished. He was still going to work, do another business, and that is the business of intercession. To intercede. Because when he ascended, he never ascended together with the church. We remained back. Me and you, we remained. He said, I leave them in the world. So though they are not of the world, but I leave them in the world. He said, keep them in thy word. Keep them in your truth. In the world. So we, Jesus never ascended with the church. We remained here. What did he go to do? He was not going to occupy his throne of glory because he has not finished the business. Praise the name of the Lord. He has not finished the business. So the scripture is saying, Peter, now he's saying, but he saith himself. He is not ascended unto heavens because he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. This is now quoting what David said, until I make thy vows or your enemies, thy foes too. We are talking about David establishing the thought and the teaching. And the doctrine, doctrine of Jesus Christ, that David is not ascended. And Jesus is ascended. But when he ascended, he never went back to his throne of glory. He went and sat because he had not finished. So the Bible, again, Peter said, men and brethren, first number 29. Let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead, so he has not ascended. So he was not referring to himself. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. No, he was not referring to himself, but prophetically, he was talking about Jesus Christ. He was talking about when Jesus comes on the face of the earth, being born of a virgin woman, and having this body, human, Adamic body, he will die, and after that he will ascend. But when he ascends, he is not going to go back to his seat of throne. No. He was not going to sit on that throne of glory. He relinquished that. He gave it up for a season, for a time, so that he can come and redeem men. Praise the name of the Lord. He, the, the scripture says, uh, he left it. Let me finish here, then I'll go there. Let, let, let me freely uh, speak unto you of the Patrick David. That he is both dead and buried. So David is both dead and buried. 
So it is not only falling to David sitting on the light hand of God and his sepulcher, his grave is with us unto this day. He said his grave, his body, everything is rotting in the grave waiting for the resurrection. So when he was saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, back to the book of Psalms 1, 110th chapter and verse number 1. So when he's saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy, fust, thy enemies thy footstool. This is the, the chance. Jesus, I said, he gave up for a time, for a season. He gave up his seat of throne because of me and you. That is how powerful you are. That is how valuable you are that Jesus surrendered his throne of glory. Where he shared the glory with God. Where he was equal with God. Uh, Philippians the second chapter and verse number six. Where he was equal with God. Where he had the same nature with God. He thought it not who being in the form of God and thought it not nobody to be equal with God. Look at that. Jesus, there's a time in the beginning before he relinquished, he was equal with God. He was occupying, that is why in the book of Genesis, God is speaking to him and he's saying, let us make man in our own image. Us, two, two people there. Two beings right there. God Almighty, the Father and Jesus, the Son. So they are talking and God is saying, God the Father is saying to the Son, saying they share the same glory. Being who being in the form of God and thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He never thought it to be robbery to be equal with God. Hallelujah. Verse number seven. But made himself of no reputation. He surrendered. He surrendered the glory for you. That is why, my brother, when you say Jesus is my Lord, my sister, when you accept Jesus Christ, you are saying, yes, your sacrifice was not in vain. When you say, I will follow you, you are saying your sacrifice was not in vain. Your suffering on the cross was not in vain. You living your throne of glory. Remember he's saying, in the regeneration where the son of man shall sit on his seat of glory or throne of glory because he is not seated right now. That is why as a church we faithfully follow him. We faithfully follow. And being, and but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. That is how precious your salvation is. The whole son of God, the only begotten son of God, who was equal with God, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He left it because of you. That is why anybody hardening their hearts against this gospel, it is like you are, you, are, you are slapping Jesus on the face saying your sacrifice was in vain. You are telling him hey, he didn't know what he was doing when he was leaving his throne. But he did it because of you. He lowered himself. He lowered himself to the very deepest role, lowly position of a human being where he can die even the death of the cross. He died. But even when he died and he ascended up on high, he never went and occupied the throne. No, he was still. And I would like to remind you, to sit on the right hand, it means you have the privilege, you have the favor. You are involved in the decision of uh, when you sit on the right hand of the king, in the book of First Kings, the second chapter, and first number 19, we see Solomon, when his mother came to visit him, called Beersheba, Bathsheba, uh, he said, therefore, Bathsheba, therefore went unto King Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet his, uh, uh, his mother, to meet her, and bowed himself unto her, and sat down, on his throne now the king I'd like you to know god is the king 
He is the king of kings. He is God Almighty. He is the creator of the heavens of the earth. But he has somebody else. Like, like now Solomon, he has sat on his throne and coast, listen to that, and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother, where? And sat on, and she sat on his light hand. That means she is involved. She got involved in the decisions that were being formed by the son. He, she was being consulted. She will remember she was going to intercede for Adonijah. So the only way she can be listened to is when she sits on the light hand. So when we are talking about Jesus sitting on the light hand of God, we are saying he is there for a business and God will listen to him. God will listen to what he is saying because he is seated. When you are seated on the light hand of the king or the authority or the leadership, it means you are consulted in some issues. You are privy to the decisions that are being made and your opinion will be considered. And that is why Jesus never sat on the left. Praise the name of the Lord. When you sit on the light, it means you are near the authority. You are consulted. You are aware. Before any decision is made, the king will consult with the mother who is seated on his light, not on the left. The left is for people. Uh, is it the book of uh, Matthew? Matthew, the 25th chapter and first number 33. The, 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 the sheep. And he shall set the sheep on his light hand. Because they are favored, they are honored, they are privileged by the goats on the left. And that is why Jesus is sitting on the right hand, like the mother of Solomon is sitting, because she is going to intercede and to inquire about Adonijah. And now when he, she sits on the, the, the sun causes him to sit, to her to sit on the light, it means I'm ready to listen to you. I'll give you a healing ear. I'll consider what you're about to say. And that is what Jesus is given by God Almighty. That when he was ascending, when he ascended, he sat on the light hand of God to signify that God will involve him in the decision. God will involve him. He'll be privy before anything happens to that individual that Jesus redeemed with his own blood. Remember, he shed his blood for you because of you. For you and me to be reconciled back to God and our sins to be forgiven, to be cleansed and to be washed of our filthiness. Now, when we again repeat then there's somebody sitting right there. And God will hear. That is why he said, Matthew the 26th chapter and verse number 64, Jesus Christ himself said, Matthew, uh, then Jesus, Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting, on the light hand of power. When you are light hand of power. Light hand of authority. That means you are involved with what is happening. And the decisions that are being made around the power. Around the authority. You are part of it. The one sitting on the seat of authority. Will consult with you. So Jesus, uh, you shall hear after shall you see the son of man sitting on the light hand of power. And I want to tell you, my brother, Jesus may not be sitting on his throne of glory, but he is sitting next to the authority. He is sitting next to the power. Why? For your sake. Praise the name of all for my sake. Waiting for the generation. Jesus will occupy his, his throne of glory in the regeneration. When you and me will fully be uh, reconciled back to God and sin and death will have been taken away. But before then, he is sitting at the right hand of the authority. Mark the 16th chapter and verse number 19. The Bible is saying, so then after the Lord 
had spoken unto them. Listen to this. He was received up into heaven. And where did he go? Not in his throne of glory. Where did he sit? Not back into the seat of his glory. He was received up and into heaven and sat, praise the name of the Lord, on the light hand of God, not on his seat of glory, of glory, not on his throne of glory, but he sat on the light hand of power. So that any decision that God is making, he is there to influence it. He is there to confess and to talk with God. But before you destroy that man, it is true he may have committed sin. It is true he may have gone contrary to the command of God. But before you release your love upon him, I am interceding for him. I am coming to you. And please, I am next to you. Consider what I'm saying. I shed my blood for him. I died on the cross for him. I left my seat of glory. I left my throne of glory because of them. And I don't want to go back to that seat of glory until I see that man and still I see that woman being forgiven and having a life standing before you. They may have seen, but remember the blood. Remember the blood that I shed at Calvary. He came to shed his blood for humanity. But remember that he just took the committed sin, the sin that was there. But remember after that, men were still left in the world where the devil is having influence. In this world, there will be trouble, there will be temptations, there will be trials. That is why Jesus said, if I occupy my seat of throne, then my seat and my father's seat of throne Will, of glory will require every soul that sinneth will be destroyed, must die. That is the, 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 the justice of God. When he sits on that seat of glory, the throne of glory, Jesus sits on his seat and God Almighty sits on his seat, then the justice of God on that throne is that any soul that sinneth will be destroyed. But I thank God, Jesus never went. He delayed he delayed his accession to the throne of glory. Why? To be seated there. Hebrews the first chapter and first number three. To sit on the right side of God. So that when you are liable for judgment. God. Jesus will say peace. Who being in the brightness of his glory. That is Jesus Christ. And the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he, listen to this. When he had by himself purged our sins. That is the sins that were committed. When you receive Jesus Christ right now. You had not received Jesus Christ. When you receive Jesus Christ, the committed sins are purged out. They are removed. But remember, you are not taken to heaven right away. Remember, you are not only moved from this world. There's still temptations and there's still trials in this world. So once in a while, you will fall into sin. Now you need an advocate. The Bible called him an advocate. We need to have an advocate that every now and then will tell the judge, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? God himself, according to the law, or say, this one have sinned. And I said, whoever sinneth will be killed. But Jesus now, he said, I will delay. And I thank God for Jesus. He said, I will delay my accession to my throne of glory. Because these people have left them into the, in the world. And in the world there is sin. In the world there is, uh, there is temptations and trials. He said, uh, so we need an advocate like there. He purged the sins. When you receive Jesus Christ, now, now all the sins that you have committed there before are forgiven. But from now, you are still in the world. You may fall into sin. My little children, John the first John, the second chapter and first number one. He said, my little ch children, these things light unto you that you sin not. He said, I am lighting to you, encouraging you not to fall in sin. But if any man sin, 
We have an advocate with the Father. We have somebody seated at the right hand of God. Somebody seated at the right hand of that seat of judgment. That it requires judgment. Your sin, you are judged. Your sin, the soul that sinneth will surely die. But I thank God we have an advocate. We have Jesus Christ. That is why he said, well, I was in them in the world. I kept them in your truth. He said, now I am not in the, with them. I come to thee, O Father, but I leave them in the world. And in the world, he said, you'll have tribulations. You'll have trials. You'll have temptations. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome. You shall also overcome. But how do you overcome? As an advocate. Well, remember, my little children, these things light I unto you, but you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, which that is Jesus Christ, the righteous. Hallelujah. That is why he is seated. Hebrews, the first chapter, verse number three. After he purged our sins, after he purged our sins, he didn't just go and say now, They'll find their way. No, he said, I have to make sure I will be there for them. Because the tempter is still there. The devil is still there. So I have to be there. When they are tempted of the devil and they fall into sin, I will be there. He says, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the light hand of the majesty on high, not on his throne of glory, I'm showing you why we need to follow Jesus Christ. I'm showing you why we need daily to come. And the early church, they did it daily. And the statement is, these are they that followed the lamp with whosoever he go with. Why do you follow? Because in the regeneration, we are not yet in the regeneration. Not the regeneration of the soul, but the regeneration of the universe. The creation, humanity. When the Son of Man shall have sat on his seat of glory or throne of glory, he is not seated there, lie now, lie now, he is seated on the light hand of the Father, of the power, of the majesty on high, doing what Hebrews the eighth chapter and verse number one. He said, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum, this is the, the total, this is the summary. This is, we have talked a lot of things. This is what uh, Hebrews, uh, the, the light of the book of Hebrews is saying. We have talked about many things from Hebrews, the first chapter uh, to the seventh chapter. We have talked about many things. He said, but this is the summary. This is the summary now of the things which we have spoken. This is the summary. We have such an high priest. He said, this is the summary. We have such an high priest. Who is set on the light hand of the throne of the majesty on high. He said, this is the summary that we have. A high priest. Let me go first of all to book, the book of Romans. The eighth chapter and first number 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, lather, that is reason again. And when he rose again, where did he go? When he rose again, where did he go? He said, who is even at the light hand of God as an advocate, also maketh intercession for us. He is our advocate. He is interceding. When you are you fall in sin, because the Bible says there is no man that sinneth not. When then, and I'm not saying this to encourage sin, but I'm saying when you are tempted and you fall into sin, we have an advocate. We have an intercessor. When the judge, justice of God is saying the soul that sinneth will surely die, God is saying no, have mercy. Give him another chance. Praise the name of the Lord. He, he is making intercession for us. That is why he didn't occupy the, his throne of glory. He forgot that, forgo that. He said, until I have all them that I died for, 
made to start to have a light standing before God. So Romans, uh, Hebrews, so he is saying, who also make an intercession for us, uh, uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter and verse number 15, uh, uh, first of scripture, first number 15 of the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So Jesus is touched by your suffering. He is touched by your temptation. He is touched by what you go through. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. When he is seated at the right hand of God, what he is saying is that whatever you go through as a human being, he's saying, I know how it feels. When you are in pain, he said, I know the pain you are going through because there was also a time when I was having this Adamic body, I went through pain. When you are hungry, you also say, remember, I also fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I know how it feels to be hungry. He is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. When he is thirsty, you are thirsty, you need help. He was there. He says, I know how it feels. He was tempted. He said, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was, was in all points. In all points, what point did you say you are tempted? What did you say you are going through? What did you say nobody knows what you are going through? Jesus knows because he went through it. And that is why he said, I don't want to sit on my seat of throne of glory or throne of glory because of that brother, because of that sister. So whatever you go through, remember, we have an advocate. We have an intercessor. And he is waiting for you. He is waiting for me and you until we are glorified. Until we take these bodies laid down and we have another body. But was in all points tempted like us. We are. As we are. In other words, whatever. What is that that you say, sister, you are going through? What is that that you say the pastor is not even aware? What is that I say nobody is aware? Jesus is aware and not only aware, he also went through it. And you know what? He conquered. He overcame. And he said, somebody sang, he said he came from heaven to the earth to show the way. From the throne to the grave. And from the grave back to heaven. So that he can show us the way. And when he went back, he, went, he didn't go back to the throne. I would like to you to know that he didn't go back to his throne. He went and sat on the right hand of God so that he can continually intercede for you and for me. Praise the name of the Lord. Intercede because he is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He is there pleading our cause. He is there presenting our interest before God, like that lawyer, like that attorney that you have. And, and, and when they go to the judge, they are presenting and pleading your case and your cause to the judge and say, consider, before you make this harsh judgment upon my client, I want you to consider this. I want you to consider this. He is pleading, Jesus is pleading your case as seated at the light hand of God. And you know what I said? When you sit on the light, when somebody sits on the light hand of the authority and power, and it means they are given a healing ear. What they say will be considered. What they will say, the king will listen. They are involved in the decision. And that is why we are not consumed. That is why we are not destroyed. Not because we have been holy. Not because we have not done things worthy God's judgment and God's love. But we have an advocate there. He said it is true. But remember, he is also in the world. He is still in the flesh. He is still in the Adamic nature. So God give him another chance. God give him another opportunity. And God says, okay. Because he is listening to my advocate. He is listening to my intercessor. Praise the name of the Lord. Seeing Hebrews the 7th chapter and verse number 25. Pleading our case. Wherefore he is able also to save them 
to the uttermost. Jesus is able. He didn't just finish everything on the cross. On the cross and the shedding of blood, he finished the committed sin. That which we had committed, what that which man had committed, and you, when you receive Jesus Christ, and you say, come in my heart, wash my heart from all filthiness and from all sin with your blood, that is done. But from there, remember, you're not going to heaven straight. You are still in the world, and once in a while you fall, and you need an advocate. And he wants to save you unto the uttermost, until he ushers you in, into the kingdom. And he said, I'm not going to sit on my throne. Because if I sit on my throne right now, my work on earth may be in vain. Because the devil will take advantage. The devil is still on the face of the earth, roaming to and fro, the Bible says, looking for whom he may devour. So the devil didn't go to sleep. When Jesus died on the cross, he never destroyed the devil. When Jesus resurrected, he never destroyed the devil. The devil is still walking on the face of the earth. Lowering like a lowering lion up and down looking for somebody to devour and that is you and me. And that is why Jesus said if I go and be at my throne who will be interceding for this? And I thank God for the right hand of God where Jesus is saying staying and sitting. A provision was made when, 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 uh, when they were stoning Stephen. The Bible is saying Stephen. Acts the 7th chapter and verse number 55. He saw and he gave him uh, verse number 55. But he being full, verse number 54. When they had these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gushed on him with their teeth, verse number 55. And he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and you know what happened and he saw the glory of god he saw g god almighty on his seat of glory but jesus was not on his seat and jesus standing now not sitting now because when you're presenting your case as a legal a legal man before a judge on behalf of your client you don't address the judge when you're seated you address the judge when you are standing. And Jesus this time, he was interceding for Stephen. He said, God, give him grace. This is his time, but I pray you give him grace not to recant his faith. Not to say that he doesn't know me. Not to recant and say he will not preach the truth anymore. Jesus was there interceding as an advocate. Standing when advocates are addressing the, 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 the judge. They don't address the judge even in the natural when they are seated. But the Bible is saying, looking up steadfastly unto heaven and saw the law, the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Hallelujah. On the right hand of God. He was standing. Praise the name of the Lord. Why, why was he standing? He was interceding. Praise the end. And he said, and he said, behold, I see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the light hand of God. Doing what? Interceding. It is true. It is my time. That is why Stephen had enough grace to say, forgive them, father, for they know not what they're doing. Remember, he is suffering. He has pain. But he had the breath and the strength to say, forgive them. Why an advocate had won the case? He said, he, he is ready to be offered. He is ready to be sacrificed. And he said, forgive them. So we have this advocate back to the book of Hebrews, the seventh chapter. And verse number 55. It's 25, sorry. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Uttermost is not a one day thing, as I said. It is not a one year thing. He will follow when we follow him. 
he will make sure well I have every desire seeing he ever liveth and why what is he doing when he is ever living he says seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them as an advocate that is why up to now he has not gone back to the, the throne of his glory he said that will be in the regeneration that will be in the again Genesis that will be when we are going to have the new heaven and the new earth so back to the book of Psalms the 110th chapter I'm showing you the importance of the church and why Jesus had to sit and is still sitting at the right hand is to make sure that you stand the test of time you and me though we are tried though we are tempted though we go through hard times but we have an advocate seated and when we are in need he no longer sits he stands up to present and plead your case before the judge of all the earth that is God Almighty so the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies until I make thine enemies thy footstool you know who are the enemies the devil who is the author of death so God is saying to the Jesus sit here because these people will need you and Jesus said, yes I don't want to sit on my throne I know they need me so I want to occupy and sit on the light hand of the throne and power and majesty so that when they are in need I can be there for them until I make thine enemies thy footstool in other words they become your stepping stone the enemy becomes when we are talking about the enemies becoming a footstool we are talking about when when the 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 the, the the, 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 the warriors would defeat their enemies a sign of subjection was to step on their necks and to step on their heads to show that these people in the book of Joshua the 10th chapter and first number 24 to show that they have surrendered they are defeated Joshua the 24th chapter and first number uh, Joshua the 10th chapter and first number 24 and it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with him come near he said put your feet upon the necks of these kings this was a sign a symbol of defeat it was showing that these people have been have surrendered put their your feet upon the necks of these kings and they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them why that is what God is saying until I make your enemies your footstool what you're stepping on and that enemy is the devil praise the name of the Lord a first Corinthians the 15th chapter first number 24 the same thing is saying until then come at the end that end is not yet there we are not there yet praise the name of the Lord then come at the end Jesus is seated at the light hand of the father then come at the end when he shall have delivered up, up the kingdom to God even the father when listen to this when he shall have put down put down all rule and all authority and all power that is the power of the devil that is the authority of that wicked one that is the authority of Satan that has to be conquered and Jesus is occupying that before because the end is not yet Paul is just prophesying how the end will be and what will be the, the, the activities of the end it is when God will have put all the enemies Hebrews the 10th chapter and first number 12 but this man that is Jesus Christ but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever just one his own blood that he shed at Calvary was enough other priests would do every year every year they'll go to the Holy of Holies to offer sacrifices for sin of men 
but Jesus did it once. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, you know where he went? Not back to his throne. He sat down on the light hand of God, and that is what I want to emphasize on. We have an intercessor seated at the light hand of God, and that is Jesus Christ. Why? To make sure you and me, that is why we follow. Jesus left the church. Jesus left the church as the vehicle to take us to where he is. Jesus left the preaching of the gospel to us that we may prepare the saints of God. And the more you follow him, then there's a guarantee. In the regeneration, you will also be rewarded. And, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat on the light hand of God. And he, first number 13, I like first number 13. And from there, when he sat on that light hand of God, from that time, from henceforth, what is he doing? Expecting. Jesus is waiting for you. Jesus is waiting until the church will conquer the enemy. The preaching of the gospel will subdue the power of darkness. The, 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 the preaching of the gospel will overcome the power of Satan until he is there waiting until we conquer the enemy. The gospel, the preaching of the gospel is the power of God. Lomas, just light it down, them of you that are lighting. Lomas, the first chapter and first number 16, Paul is saying, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power. The gospel has power. The, the gospel has efficacy. When, when we preach the word of God, it has the power. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus is waiting. Hebrews, the, the 10th chapter and first number 13. It is, a, uh, we, we have this gospel for, from hence, expecting till his enemy, enemies be made his footstool. Now look at that. So God says, this is what I'm going to do. Sit, back to Psalms 110 chapter, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Verse number two. Because he said, the Lord shall send the road of thy strength out of Zion. That is the gospel. The road of the strength of God is the gospel, the power. The Lord shall send the road of thy strength, the power of the gospel. What I've just quoted in Romans, the first chapter and first number 16, out of Zion. And he says, through this, you are going to rule over your enemies. Through the gospel. That is why the more we lead, the more we preach this gospel, the more dominion the church is supposed to have, the more dominion you as a child of God you're supposed to have. Remember, Jesus is seated on the right hand, expecting the church to exercise his power. The preachers to exercise his power. The believers to exercise this power. The road. The Lord, the Lord shall send the road of thy strength out of Zion. He said, and because of that, you are going to rule. You are going to subdue. You are going to rule in the midst of thine enemies. The enemies, that is to have dominion over the devil. To have rule and authority over the enemy. That can only happen through the road that is coming from the church. From Zion. Zion is the church. Praise the name of the Lord. When we are preaching, what are we doing? We are giving. We are sending forth the road. What I'm doing right now is to give you the road that even though the enemy will come, you will conquer him with this. And remember, Jesus is your advocate. Jesus is interceding. He is not seated on the throne. He is seated by the light hand of God before he occupies his seat of throne. Hallelujah. Then, then the last enemy that will be conquered, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and verse number 26, the scripture says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. How will death be destroyed? Through the destruction of the devil. Because the devil is the author of sin. 
and sin is the cause of death. So that means when the devil is destroyed, then we'll have no sin. That means we'll have no death. But what will overcome the devil is this. The road. So Jesus is seated there. And that is why I, am, I say again, back to the book of uh, Matthew, the 19th chapter. In closing. The 29th, the 28th verse. The scriptures say, and Jesus, and the question was, verse number 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. We talked about following. Daily, four services in a week, from a house to house. They said, what is in this for us? Verse number 28. And Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me, and that is you, my brother, I'm saying to you, my sister, you are following the truth is not in vain. There's a reward. You are following Jesus and the preacher of the gospel is not in vain. There is a reward. In the regeneration, not now. Today you may say I'm not having everything going my way. But remember, even when things are not going your way, we have an advocate seated at the light hand of God. But he is waiting even him when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory. Hallelujah. That is the thing. There's a reward. And we have to wait. And as we wait, we follow. As we wait, we follow. You shall also sit upon. And that scripture, somebody sent it to me. and said, can I explain that? And that is what I've been explaining. Part A of it. The time of regeneration. In the regeneration, when the son of men shall sit on the throne of his glory. Lie now, he is not seated there. He is seated on the light hand of God. But when he sits there, part B of it, he said, you shall also sit upon 12 tribes or 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. We'll deal, about, we'll deal with that again. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm talking about the honor, the privilege that Jesus has given given every believer humanity he would have gone straight to his seat of throne of or throne of glory but he said no i have to do the work of an advocate i have to do the work of a, an intercessor because these people i left them in the world you are in the world and in the world there is tribulations there is temptations there is trials but remember there is an advocate he is seated on the light hand of the power, the majesty. Doing what? Interceding for you. And I thank God that is why we have continued up to this day. That is why we have not been destroyed. That is why even sometimes when we feel like we want to give up, he is there to intercede. And God, he said, God, give him more grace. God, give him another chance. God, give him uh, the opportunity uh, to preach one more time. Give him an opportunity to go to church one more time. Give him an opportunity to lift up their hands in the sanctuary one more time. Why? It is more because we earned it. We have a faithful intercessor. We have a faithful advocate who is seated at the light hand of the judge of all the earth. But when you are liable for God's judgment, he is there saying, pleading, like he stood when Stephen was being stoned to death. Stephen would have given up. Stephen would have uh, recanted his faith. But I thank God Jesus was there standing. What is he doing? Interceding for him. Being an advocate. Say, God, give him. My father, give him more grace. For him, I went down to the earth. For him, because of him, I shed my blood. Because of him, I died on the cross. Very, very humiliating kind of a death. For his sake. And this time is when he need you more. It is when he need more of your help. It is when he need more of your grace. Give him more grace. And lie there. Stephen received more grace. And I pray that you receive exactly what Jesus is interceding for you. What he is asking the father. 
to give you, and that is grace, strength, courage, healing, good health, blessings, all kind of blessings. I pray that you'll receive it. And when Stephen received it, he said, forgive them, Father. He received enough grace. Even at the point of his pain and death, he still have that spirit to forgive. Why? Because the, the, the advocate, the intercessor was there. And I pray in your weakest moment that this advocate will stand. And I know, I don't even have to pray, I know he will be standing. And that is why you have continued up to this day. And from now, henceforth, I know he will continually intercede for you. Praise the name of the Lord as we wait for the time of regeneration. So God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you. Let me close with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. And I bless your wonderful name for this word of encouragement. But God, we have an advocate. We have Jesus Christ who left his throne of glory and came down for our sake. And even when he ascended up on high, he never went back to that throne, but he came and sat on thy light hand to daily intercede for us. Father God, I thank you. And I bless your wonderful name for this sacrifice. And I know our tomorrow is secure. Our tomorrow is safe because we have a faithful intercessor. Even in our weakest time when we are not able to stand on our feet, we have an advocate life there. I commend these, my viewers, into the hands of God Almighty. Let them lean on their, this advocate. Let them rely and depend on this intercessor. In their weak moment, in their hour of need, show up. In the name of Jesus, that God Almighty, that which you have promised, that which you have said you will give the people that are called by thy name, will be released upon your people, Father. They may not have qualified for it. They may not have earned it, Jehovah, but because of the advocate, the death on the cross, the sacrifice of Jehovah he made, I pray that, good Lord, you will release it unto them. In the name of Jesus, God uphold them. And if there is any that have not accepted this advocate, I commend them into my hands, dear Lord. Dear Father, open their hands and they may receive him that their sins may be purged away. In the name of Jesus, uphold and keep them in thy truth. In Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you. God sustain you. And we have an advocate. We have an intercessor. In our hour of need, he will rise up before that throne of majesty and intercede for you god bless you god keep you be of good courage you are not alone you are not walking in this way alone you have an advocate you have an intercessor and i know and i'm confident you will make it not because of your own power but because of the advocate who is a well-seasoned advocate he knows how to argue the case out and i know he will win and he won the case for you god bless you god keep you till we meet again Amen and amen. God bless you.